Meta is worth over $1.6 trillion, but is it really worth that much? As Warren Buffett once said, price is what you pay, value is what you get. In this video, I'll show you exactly how he'd value a company like Meta using real numbers from their latest annual report and a simple Google Sheet you can build in five minutes. The method is called intrinsic value. In simple terms, it's what a business is actually worth based on how much cash it generates today and in the future. Forget the share price, forget the hype, forget what analysts or Reddit thinks. A business is just a glorified machine that prints money. The more it prints, then the more it's worth to us as investors. That is what intrinsic value means. It simply reflects what we should pay for the productivity of that money printing machine. The tool we use to calculate intrinsic value is the same one used by Warren Buffett for over 60 years to build a $1 trillion investment portfolio. It's called the Discounted Cash Flow Model, or DCF. But don't worry, this isn't a textbook lecture. I've broken the calculation down into five easy, simple to follow steps. See, we're already in the spreadsheet. By the end of this video, you'll be able to calculate the value of absolutely any stock on the market. So let's dive straight in. The first step in calculating intrinsic value is to figure out how much free cash flow the business is generating today. To cut the jargon, just think of free cash flow as the real cash profit a business produces after paying all the bills and investing in maintenance to keep the business running. There are a few places to go to find this number. Forecaster is a great tool here as they bring all of Meta's financial data into one single place. Alongside that, they also bring several other indicators to help us evaluate a business. Under the Fundamentals tab, they have already calculated a DCF figure. But to come to our own conclusion, we can just click raw and then cash flow. Right at the top of the page, we have the free cash flow figure. Just in case, I like to calculate this number myself. On the left, you have Forecaster, and on the right, you have Meta's latest 10K report, both showing the same numbers. So last year, Meta generated $91.3 billion in operating cash flow. They also spent a further $37.3 billion of this on capital expenditure, things like servers, data centers, and R&D. If we input those values into Google Sheets, we simply subtract the capex from the operating cash flow, giving us free cash flow of roughly $54 billion. This is our starting point, and $54 billion answers our question of how much this money printing machine generates today. One other piece of information we need, which you can find both in the 10K report and on Forecaster, is the shares outstanding. This is the total number of Meta stocks issued. According to Forecaster, this is 2.53 billion, so we'll keep a record of that for later. Our next step is to take our free cash flow figure and forecast how fast it might grow over the next decade. This is where many beginners, or Wall Street hypesters, mess up. They assume sky-high and overly optimistic growth rates forever. Unfortunately, that's not how real investing works. If we look back using Forecaster, you can see Meta has wild swings in its free cash flow year after year. As investors, we want to be cautious and apply high standards for the companies we invest in, so we're not left high and dry. Meta is already a massive business, so it's harder to grow a $1.6 trillion company than, say, a $16 billion one. So let's stay grounded and assume a simple 10% annual growth rate. This, I feel, is probably about right, given their recent performance, product updates, and growth in AI products. So now that we've decided on a 10% annual growth rate, we can project Meta's free cash flow 10 years into the future. Simply input 10% into our calculator, and you'll see the numbers start to populate. This just saves you a bit of time, and you can find a link to my calculator down below in the video description. So in 10 years, what we're projecting is that Meta will make $140 billion a year in free cash flow. So you might be wondering, why do we project out just 10 years? We don't expect Meta to shut down in year 11, of course. It will continue generating cash flow well beyond that point. To capture that in our model, we use a concept called terminal value. This is just a fancy term for how much we think the company will be worth in 10 years' time. Again, there are several approaches to calculating a terminal value, but in our case, the easiest method is to use a valuation multiple. Earlier, we asked the question, what would we pay for this company as a cash generating machine? Here we ask that again for the case where Meta generates a free cash flow of $140 billion a year 10 years from now. 
Investors commonly use the price earnings or PE ratio as a proxy for a valuation multiple. Jumping over into macro trends, we can see Meta tends to hover at a multiple of around 20 to 30 times. For the purposes of this video, let's use a conservative 20. In putting that to our model, we get a terminal value of $2.8 trillion. So now we have all of our cash flows mapped out. The next step is to discount each of them to the present value. Do you remember the saying, a dollar tomorrow is worth less than a dollar today? The root of this when it comes to investing is the opportunity cost, or the foregone opportunity to earn a return on that dollar if it is received tomorrow. So for us, we need to discount these cash flows back to the present value today to acknowledge the minimum return we'd expect to earn on our investment. Since 1957, the S&P 500 index, a common benchmark for investors, has returned an annual 10.33%. Like our terminal value, there are several approaches used by investors here too. I just find this approach is easier. And if I wanted to be extra conservative, for example, I could bump this up to say 11, 12 or higher percent. Our calculator already has the formulas. So as you can see, we've supplied everything it needs to calculate what we should pay for a single stock in Meta. After discounting the cash flows and the terminal value, we get a total value for Meta of $1.58 trillion. When we divide this by the total number of Meta shares, which we collected earlier, we get a fair value of $625 per Meta stock. At the time of filming this video, Meta currently trades for $666, so based on our analysis, the stock is currently overvalued. As we know from Warren Buffett, price is what you pay, value is what you get. In this case, there is less value than the price would pay at today's levels. Scrolling down, we also have a sensitivity table. On the left-hand side, we have a margin of safety, where we apply a discount to our intrinsic value calculation to account for assumption errors we've applied. On top, we have different growth rates. So this allows us to see how the intrinsic value would change if we use different assumptions in our model. If a cell is green, that means the intrinsic value, with that assumed growth rate and margin of safety, is higher than the stock price and could be a buying opportunity. On the other hand, if it's red, the price is higher than the intrinsic value with those assumptions, so we should stay away. So guys, that's everything I have to share with you today. If you like the look of the forecaster tool I used in today's video, make sure to check them out below. They have a lot of interesting features, so make sure to take a look. Also make sure to check these videos out next, continuing the conversation on how to value a stock. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.